So there's a lot of theory about uh, the same with the black hole, creation of black hole. There's no black hole. Black hole is just because the center is so intense, principal matter, as it crosses to a transition matter, it creates a balanced field that you, there is no light created. When two things are similar, they don't create any friction or very little friction. And that's why they call it the dark. That's why the space is dark, because the fields in the space are of the same strength, more or less, because they're traveling, they're transiting to each other. So we don't see light. In reality, when there is too much of friction, we see the light. That's why we have, when the rays of the sun come and they f interact with the uh, magnetic field of the earth, it creates a cre friction, which gives us the light. If this was in case, why do we have the dark? Because there is no ray at interacting with the magnetic field of the earth. This is the same reason we have day and night. Who is behind it from the direction of the sun is in dark because there is not enough ray comes to interact with the magra magnetic field and gravitational field of the earth together. And the magnetic field and gravitational field of the earth decides how much of the field of the sun we attract extra when you get explosion of matters. It's the same thing, it's all explained in the books are published and to be published by within the next few weeks and months. I walked out of Africa for years and I've seen people who have nothing, they just have, they take the, uh, literally the syrup from the palm tree and they, that's their food. They share it with others and they're happy people, they're always dancing and singing. And I've seen people who have three, four rows, roses park outside their house, they got multi-millions and billions and they still want more and nothing is good enough and nobody is good enough. So, happiness is a state of mind and the greed of the man. More and more people are becoming conscious of they can't take whatever they like. They have to put something back in the society. The, the, the new generation, by watching and being aware of, are more or less self-regulating themselves. Themselves in what, how much they take. We see a lot of people wanting to become vegetarians because not to hurt animals. But in fact, even the vegetable has a soul, if you understand the structure of the living. So, in so many ways, we start regulating ourselves for two reasons. First of all, the greed is finding its own limit. And secondly, we're getting so much that we cannot handle. But at the same time, it's part of progress of human being. That's why we are so successful and we discover and we live in such a, such a life at the moment. Because we want, we look for to achieve what we don't have. It's the same why we go to space, because we want to be there. And we find the tools for it. Unfortunately, the space technology has been hijacked by one of the most, uh, uh, what I call, unhuman person in the world. Uh, Mr. Van Brown, as we know now the files of the Second World War has opened up. No man has committed more murder than this gentleman. Even the Americans don't want to speak to him as, as part of their space technology. To save his life, he diverted the whole knowledge of man towards his way to save his own meager life. And he brought it the propulsion. And the same with the scientists who went to Russia from, from the Second World War. So now they open the Second World War books and we know he's been he is personally responsible for 25,000 deaths in the caves they found within the, behind the uh, U-2 test sites, which he signed for. So, a lot of things has led us to this point, and hopefully in the future it will not. I hope, uh, as I always say, my technology will not harm a single soul. As you know, uh, the Cash Foundation, uh, after I die, goes back to two organizations. Uh, half goes to the United Nations and half goes to the Universal House of Justice in Israel, which is the religion which I believe in. And it bases on unifying all the religions. So, uh, at the end of the day, the politicians and the, uh, the man of any religion, you being Christian, Buddhist, a Muslim, Christian, Jew, uh, we all will come to uh, 
work through and with each other to achieve uh, the peaceful man. So the United Nations will not stay the way it is as it's been used by as an exclusive club for murdering and destroying other nations under cover of uh, uh, justice. The uh, United Nations will serve, come to serve man as one piece and one unit, not for the present man. When we go to space, we need to speak as one language from people of the earth and the United Nations will be the, like uh, the council which will do all the negotiations and procedures which to be set up. As I said, I know what's to come, but human race is not ready yet to understand. What is to come? Oh, a lot of things. We, is, we are going literally from the time we went from Europe to America. We thought we found a new land and there is nobody there. As we went to America and we came across the Red Indians and different type of Red Indians, we had to negotiate with different chiefs. And it'll be the same when we go to space. When we come to new places, there'll be different creatures, not necessarily physical the way we see them, but there'll be men of intelligence or livings of intelligence. We have to negotiate and that negotiation and all of it on behalf of the rest of the human race or the blue planet will be done by United Nations. This Mickey Mouse game of abuse of uh, power for certain people to please their own pocket will finish very soon because everybody will have as much as everybody else and everybody can do what everybody else can do. So equality will come very much faster than other people think. Because I can build the same house as anybody else and I can have whatever luxuries in it the same as anybody else. So the agreed time will go at the same time when man goes to space they realize how feeble they've been fighting for nothing. Because there's much more in the universe for man to enjoy than a brick and water which they put together and call it their own. In so many ways, there is a lot of uh, uh, talk about um, UFOs and other things, which I don't believe in it uh, because uh, it's not UFO, it's not unidentified. With the technology which I have developed and the way we've seen we operate when we turn our systems on, we see the glowing of the system, exactly like a, uh, what we call a bright light. So. Uh, whoever we call UFOs, they are not UFOs, they are people who came to understand the structure of working of the universe and use the same system as now we use. Their system has a gravitational and a magnetic field and the interaction system with our atmosphere creates a light. Once you go out of this um, atmosphere, you, the interaction is much weaker, you don't see it, it's, you work in the same level. So, uh, we ourselves soon become a UFO to somebody else because the knowledge is here I mean in the next 10 years we are the aliens of the other planets as as they are they are exploring to find out about the rest of the universe we will explore this in the next five to ten years so um, I've seen some structures in the pictures people show um, you can explain the systems could be real because if you use a uh, magnetic gravitational system and you understand uh, the way mm, you need systems to move in different directions you will understand why the structures are and the way they are as i said in our uh, first trials in tehran thanks to the government of iran um, we achieved a vertical lift Vertical lift is very easy because once you create a magnetic field and gravitational field against the earth, it just pushes you up or you move it slightly in one direction. But it took further research and development to actually find the technology to be able to move in every direction. And that's why we offered, as we go back to the beginning of this talk, our technology to NASA and the Russian Space Agency if they want and if there is a problem in the space with the people in the space lab. We are prepared and we are getting ourselves ready for November if uh, any time they cannot feed or reach supply to them we are prepared to take that action and I'm sure um, the Iranian government is in the same position uh, and if need be that we have to return them we are getting ourselves prepared the technology is not a technology the systems are there we have to bring our development 
within the next few months uh, very quick, quickly into operation and every effort has been made to, do, to get to that point. Even today, the preliminary stages have been put into action. People talk about this is a fairy tale. To them, might be to us, it's a reality. We are we already working on the machines that doesn't need wheels and moves on its own, because we understand the directional motion, how to move back, forward, and sideways. We don't need propulsion. Initially, we thought we lift, we create a lift. And then we use the energy of the system to literally lose like a propulsion to blow ourselves the direction we want to go. But now understanding the concept of motion in any direction, we don't need that kind of things either. So sooner or later, uh, we become ourselves bright lights in the sky for ourselves on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And uh, I regret that I misused, abused the word UFO, meaning unidentified flying objects, by which I mean that the objects that we see could be identified. So it are, for instance, maybe extraterrestrial vehicles. They are, they are like us going from, let's say, Europe into Africa with our modern cars, where they are used to donkeys and camels or elephants. Just because we have a little bit more knowledge and we have got a little bit more advanced, it doesn't mean we are any different than the people in those countries. We are all the same blood and the same flesh. And it's the same with the people who, what you might call, slash, uh, extra UFOs or whatever they call them. These, if there are such a thing which are, there is no if about it. It's just that this level of life has reached to where we are now in past four or five years with this new technology. So we have to, a lot to learn and the basis of learning it and using it is to be used on a peaceful way. Man has changed his habits. Once we change the habits, then we find out uh, a lot of things will open up for us. The this, this scene has to be set by the governments. The governments have to change the attitude of uh, what I call raping and uh, uh, what I call destroying other nations to feed their own people. The governments have to learn to share and to be there to support the real way, not to rob the way it's been done for past centuries. And in a way, uh, as I was giving a talk to uh, the scientists from IMAC, the Nano Institute in Belgium years ago, um, the, one of the people present, the scientists and the financier, said so the problem with you is that you write your books in such a simple language that everybody understands. Your papers has to be in a very complicated scientific way. And I said to him, I write my books in a way that a white man sitting across the table from me calling him professor and a black man in the mangrove jungles of South Africa will have the same understanding and can do the same thing that one cannot abuse the other. Mm -hmm. He got upset and he left the room. So. And they said, IMAC is not prepared to collaborate because I was too straightforward. So at the moment, according to what we have, our technology is about 100 to 150 years ahead of IMAC, according to the people inside IMAC. So I think IMAC can close their doors or join us to bring a peaceful process program. And how happy are you as a person to be able to play that magnificent role and sharing that? There is no role to play, it's just a matter of transferring knowledge. There are a lot of scientists who work on the same basis and they see what we do and they are copying it, they are, they are doing it. I've been to China, I've been to Korea. I have spoken to the scientists from different parts of Europe. Um, very interesting point uh, is I was talking to the top man in NASA years ago. And I remember the position, I was standing outside, nearly outside the central station in Antwerp. It goes back to 2004 or 5. And he said to me, Mr. Cash, we have a problem. The problem is, if we accept your technology, which we know is correct, what are we going to do with the 7,000 propulsion scientists in propulsion lab in NASA? So we have to block you GPR. to guarantee the jobs. Jet yeah, JPR, jet propulsion. Boys from NASA know me very well, even the astronauts, who I speak to them on the personal line, private line. 
They know what is to come. They know what is it's there. It's just a matter of who's prepared to make the first move. And thanks to the Iranian government, they made the first move. And they announced they have a, they have a, a spaceship program. The spaceship program is part of not using propulsion and using uh, gravitational positioning because you don't need to burn any fuel and it's much easier to travel faster. This brings back a lot of, as I said, um, when your missiles are Mach 2, Mach 3 and you can go Mach 35. As one of our guys says in um, Cash Foundation says, return to the sender. Whoever sends a nuclear bomb out will receive it back much faster. I wonder who's going to be prepared to test it the first time. And on the other hand, uh, at the present time, we're all getting irradiated very heavily, as we know, because of the Japanese situation. And this technology can help to absorb most of the radiation, at least from the atmosphere, that our next generation are not born defects. This again shows the greed of people, where the technology is available and we can stop a lot of it. But uh, at the moment, certain um, people for their own pockets, they think they're very clever. But the strange thing enough is that their own children and their own blood is getting infected by the same radiation. So in a way, they are destroying their own roots.